Welcome viewers and today's topic for this uh, video presentation is dynamic programming DPV problem number 6.3 from the textbook um, and this is a problem on a hotel chain called the McDonald's so let's dive in okay so in the problem description we, what we want to do is have uh, hotels along a highway there's n possible locations m1 m2 and mn and if you put a hotel at any given location the profits coming in are p1 p2 and pn but there is a gotcha at most you can only have one hotel in each location and any two hotels must be at least k miles apart so there is a conditional requirement it's not just a penalty like the previous problem it's the feasibility in this case. And the net requirement is that we must maximize profit from um, the location of the hotels. So, well, uh, there's so many combinations where the hotels can be built. And so as a dynamic program programming solution, we have to think about is there a suboptimal, sorry, is there an optimal substructure to the problem? And uh, right off the bat you can see that you have to build n hotels but they're all linearly located so every problem can feed from the previous set of problems and if only one hotel was there or the second location or third location the next subsequent location depends on the solution to the previous locations and that's why there is an optimal substructure to this problem so here's the solution first of all we have to think of this feasibility solution the feasibility function and let's say the pre the we are looking at nth hotel and the previous that we are looking at is m so the feasibility of fmn can be defined as there was hotel m followed by n and that we know that the distance between these two must be greater than k to be one otherwise it's zero so given that we have this function f of mn, we can now go back and apply the same. Now, the setup of the matrix is important, so I'm just going to spend a minute on that. So let's say the first hotel is built in one, location 1, second is 2, 3. So I'm using that as my x-axis in the variables called i. On the y-axis, I have put j, and j always starts, in my case, with 0. And 0 means that there was nothing before it. This was really that hotel seemed to be the first one one is obviously the from the first hotel and so on and n minus one would be the n minus one hotel has the previous so this side is the previous and this side is just the the i which represents the hotel which is in consideration so if you think of the problem on i equals one then there is only one hotel so when you start you can either put a hotel there or there are no hotels. So if we put a hotel at this location, because there is no constraint, there's no other hotel. So you can always put a hotel here because it's the very first hotel. So there is no F function involved here. So the profit is going to be P1. And there's no other feasibilities because this is the first hotel. If you go to two, there's two possibilities. Either this is the first hotel, in which case the profit is just P2, or it came from 1 and 1 was also built and 2 is built so then the profit is TP1 plus P2 times uh, the feasibility function between 2 and 1 if they're feasible then this becomes TP1 uh, plus P2 times this now there's two twists in this uh, solution um, you can choose to write this as either this is um, TP1 plus this of the feasibility is not there then it's just tp1 so um so there's two options here and so based on this feasibility this will produce some value and then you write the maximum value of all these up here and this is what's used in the next and this is what is used in the next so keep that in mind that first you compute this from the previous and then you write the max here and then once you've written the max the next column uh, will use this max uh, or the maxes before 
so the same way you can fill this column and in the third column the same thing either this is the first hotel in which feasibility is not required or if feasibility is required then you are coming from one of these previous hotels which was built and you have to check that the feasibility was there otherwise you just take this cost so that's how you proceed down this path and once you have filled this in then the max of the whole solution is really tpn here and that would give you the answer so there you have it i think the um, important thing to keep in mind here was the introduction of this feasibility function which had not been there in the previous example uh, 6.2 and so that's the the trick to this problem so once again dynamic programming uh, has solved the problem because this is a two-dimensional matrix and the numbers are roughly n so the time to solve this problem is order n squared and that's the solution to this McDonald's problem so viewers if hopefully you liked and uh, enjoyed this solution and um, if you did please uh, subscribe to my channel and um, please leave me a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, any comments and uh, i'll see you soon thanks a lot bye bye